We start with the words that raise a lot of eyebrows on Wall Street today. I'll tell you what, if I ever got impeached, I think the market would crash. I think everybody would be very poor because without this thinking, uh, you would see you would see numbers that you wouldn't believe in reverse. That is right. President Trump does seem to have the whole world in his hands, or at least the whole stock market. The S&P 500 is up 34 percent since he was elected, has gained a whopping six trillion dollars in market cap during that time. So as the drama around the president continues to build, is this stock market rally really all hinged on Trump? And if he does get impeached or resigns, and of course that is a big if, what would that mean for the markets, Tim? Well, you know, and no one wants to hear my politics. I don't think anyone wants on a market show to hear our politics. So I'm just going to tell you, to me, what, what caused the markets move, what was more important than Trump himself, was when we found out that the Republicans had a clean sweep of, of the House and the Senate, and, and then they also had the executive branch. So to me, that tax deal didn't get done without essentially Congress. And, and to me, that is the more important part of what's going on here. Look, I, I think the mandate that was given to this administration was one where many folks, and let's not get into electrical, electoral colleges, whether it was a, a majority or not, bottom line, people voted for I want less regulation. I want a pro-business stance. I largely do want lower taxes. Okay. Um, and maybe I'm very concerned about how we interact with the rest of the world. A lot of that stuff has happened. A lot of that stuff is already well underway. And that will not be overturned whether this man is in the White House or not. Doesn't a Trump administration, though, represent all those things that are pro-business that yes. have helped propel the stock market higher? I totally agree with that. I mean, I think, you know, also, not being political, the Obama administration, as a backlash of 08, 09, was, had a, people felt very anti-business. The reverse is true yep. of a Trump administration's pro-business. So that causes sentiment to change, which causes companies to feel much better about being able to spend and having some certainty about that the regulatory environment wouldn't move against them. So that was really important. Remember, the Trump administration has careened from crisis to crisis for a long, for, since the very first week, right? And yet, the market continues to go up. They didn't get tax done until the end of last year. And I was actually surprised they were able to get it done at the end of last year, but they did. So I think those things are staying in place, even if he's not there. And I think they're staying in place. I think it's been too good for the American economy to, even if we have a sweep the other way, to have them say, you know what, we're dismantling the tax, the corporate tax cut right. at a minimum. Well, I they think would have to have a be... huge sweep. They, they would have to take huge, over the, yes. the House. They would have to take over the Senate. Right. They would have to get to that magic number. So to echo some of these points, all the things that were pro-growth, bullish, they already happened. Not going away. Corporate tax cuts not going away. That was a huge, look, so look at Target. Out. He's out for whatever reason. Under whatever circumstance, that's, we don't want to get into well, that. But that's and, our and scenario tax, here. Tax yeah, that's cuts, all we're doing. Tax cuts are still in place. Tax, sure. tax cuts are still yeah. in place. They're Stock not. Market's they're, okay. Those are not going away. It would have to be a major, major upheaval to take away any of these yeah. pro-growth things that have happened that created the rally that we've seen in the marketplace. So rally still intact, market still intact, earnings still intact. I, I'm not sure. So I do think as long as the policies stay in place, then stock market's going to be okay. But the act of impeachment and why he's being <clears> impeached will create a tremendous amount of political uncertainty. So, I, you know, in the short run, I think that happens. You do get a market pullback, correction, whatever you call it. I don't know if I'd call it a crash, but I would agree with the rest of the panel saying, you know what, that's a buying opportunity. Mm -hmm. But the process to get there is extremely messy. So that's an important distinction because we're basically all saying, or you guys are saying, that the economy will remain fine. But the reaction well, we, yeah. to well, the you act have, of resigning about trade, how's that going to work? Are we going to well, still yeah, have yeah, these trade yeah, deals? Target. Are we not going to be? Are the deals going to be better than they were? What's what's going to go target on with the Fed's Reserve? What's going to go on with the dollar? All these things that we don't know, and we know that markets don't like uncertainty. So for a period of time, there would be weakness. Target went from an effective tax rate of 31 percent to 21 percent. Mm -hmm. These things are not going away. This is what that tailwind is. This is what the knock-on effect is. This is what earnings are all about. It's not just that face value of an effective tax rate getting getting notched down. It's all the knock on domino effects of pro growth policies of lower regulatory environment. This allows companies to spend more freely. But than again, I think, wait, let me just add one point. Right. This is the uncertainty. We're in the uncertainty. If he were to leave for whatever reason, 
That's the certainty. That's the certainty, right? This is the uncertainty. Well, hold on a second. So, yeah, but I'm saying the process between uh, here, here and, and there, and, and for could be very messy. The day that point. he leaves, if the market's on its low, BK's a buyer. Before, but, think, but, but if it's a Russia, if it's a Russia issue, that's a huge. That, I agree with you on that. That that is a huge issue for the marketplace, and if that has tentacles past this whole payment process, and if it's a real Russia problem, then the markets right, look, are really We explored the history books last night, I think, or a couple nights on the show, and Dan talked about 73, 74 with Nixon. All um, historians are out of the woodwork here. And, and so, <laughs> so, again, and you're talking about very different, I think, uh, market cycle, but you did have a period where this uncertainty that was surrounding from, from the Saturday massacre, Saturday night massacre, all the way through the point where Nixon resigned, you had a major drawdown. Different economic Netflix. background, though. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, I agree with what BK is saying and, and that we've also seen, despite what Karen says, is, which is also true, that they've careened from crisis to crisis, we have seen points where the Trump administration's ability to hold their ground has been something that has moved markets around. The market, from an economic perspective, still, though, is going to be tethered mostly by what the Federal Reserve does, mostly by where we are. Uh, I think, so I would push back on Steve and say, look, I think the corporate tax cut is great for them. I think you've front-loaded a lot of growth, and I think a lot of these companies probably aren't necessarily going to be spending dramatically or investing in their business that much after what they've done already. So, I mean, I, I think we, we got a big boost to it. I think the economy, though, is, is but you didn't stuck think with that the dollar, big boost. stuck with the Fed, you didn't stuck think, with global politics. You didn't think that big boost originally was even worth it. And we've seen the market greet it favorably with the market ratcheting up, increasing high. But I will tell you, the China trade issue, with him gone, everyone thinks it, everyone wants to be softer. He wanted to rescue ZTE. Congress didn't. So I'm not sure about that little angle of the China trade issue being better with the president gone. I think Congress, both parties want to be really aggressive towards China. I, I, and I'm not saying that it would be better or worse. I'm just saying there would be uncertainty. And I can tell you right now, right. based on how he has acted so, so far, he's not going away quietly. It's not like, oh, he's got a peach. You know what? He's going to take off the Trump Tower and you never hear from him again. It would be a fight. Are we, in a, are we in that period of uncertainty, though, at this point? I, and, and that's where I have the question. I don't know if we're in a period of uncertainty at all at this point. I mean, to I, compare what's happened to Saturday Night Matter. Well, we'll get some clarity after the elections shortly, right? Okay. That'll be, that'll be a, some certainty. Midterm elections. Right, right, right. That'll be important. Did the House go? That'll be... Is, is that price in the market? The House going? I don't yeah. think so. No, I, I, I think, don't think so. I think the House going is, is, is not priced in, but that's a real event that could happen. We're talking about 24 seats. So that's a real event that could happen. I think it's right. halfway priced in, and that's what's holding the okay. reins on so, the S&P. So, so, okay, I asked, that re I asked that question, are we in that period of uncertainty? Because if we are, if you believe that we are, then your trading is going to be a lot different than if you believe that we are not. Right. Yes, and, and you're also in a period of uncertainty because positioning has changed from being quite cautious, quite bearish, city surprise index, bull bear readings, whatever you want to look at, newsletter polls. Um, we went from being quite bearish after being overly bullish to a place where markets really have acted like they don't care about much right now and positioning has changed. So you're doing this at all-time highs. You're doing this going into, um, first of all, September's a very difficult month of the year. And, and you now the calendar is something Something that can repeat itself or not. But uh, when I look at where you should be cautious to be playing here, I think, you know, we, we just got to read which sectors have more at risk here than others. Whether we like it or not, I like banks. I think they're cheap. But, you know, twos, tens today went to 20 basis points yeah. at one point intraday. So there's a lot of pressure in certain parts of at least the investment uh, sector breakdown. And I think that's something that will continue. Why don't we just look at what's sold off in the last couple of days off of these headlines. It's been industrials, materials, staples, utilities, financials. Everything else rallied. I know it sounds like a lot, but equally amount. Those are the rates. Industrials, right. materials, right? All, all of those were sold off based on what we've seen in the last couple of days of the news cycle. And of course, tech, consumer discretionary, those are the things that have run. Semis ran and energy also ran, which was, which was shocking to me. What would you do? What do you do? Well, to, it depends. That's what my lawyers tell me. And then they charge me <laughs> 1500 bucks. But it depends on, so at these levels, I, if you have a fresh dollar to spend, this is what I've been saying for the last week or so, it's been a bit wrong, but why am I putting a fresh dollar to work when we're going into a period of uncertainty? So that answers your question of, are we in it? I think we just started it. We just started having these kind of impeachment talks over the last few days. So do I need to put an extra dollar to work today? No, but I can buy the breakout. You know, if everything's humming, along and we get the dollar keeps rising at a steady pace money's flowing into this country and it's got to find its way someplace it'll find its way to the stock market it'll find its way to the bond market karen 
You know, I, I really don't try to time the markets. You got to time it on the way out, and then you got to time it on the way in, and then you got to pay the taxes in the middle. So to me, that doesn't really make sense for me to do. I would own more of everything that I own. I own Alphabet. That's a big position. I own the banks, owned them for a long time with Timmy. That's a big position for me as well. Some retail. I think I'm not going to be able to trade around here, the Mueller investigation or anything else, really, even trade. Well, you picked a hell of a career then. What? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can do is trade around protection. So I do that.